Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at a really sketchy impersonation scheme going on. This is KlingXAI.com. A person in my Discord reached out about this asking if this was legit and how it worked. It's fully undetected malware, and this is going to be sort of an AI-themed video, because we're going to be looking at this fake AI payload, and then we're going to use AI to reverse engineer it. Because a lot of people talk about AI for software development. I, I believe there are advantages there. But something AI is really good at is software D development or reverse engineering. But we'll get to that in a bit. So join us for a Kling AI partnership. If you're a brand film miniseries producer or part of a new media department, you can customize AI powered pretty much anything, they say. That'd be great if we were on the real Kling site, but unfortunately for us, we're not. We're on KlingXAI.com, which has nothing to do with Elon Musk and everything to do with malware. So, we can get an AI image, an AI video, or an AI video editor. Now, let's see about video with cat ears. We'll just, we'll just do that. It doesn't actually matter because it's not going to generate a video. So, it'll say our creation is brewing. Enjoy a coffee break while we finalize it. Now, this is an incredibly good copy of the real site. Everything on this site looks perfect. It looks just like Kling AI, but it's not. Now, it seems like AI in recent months has become one of the biggest targets for malware attacks. I assume this is for a similar reason why gaming is, because a lot of people will download tools, and because people who are interested in AI will oftentimes have pretty good computers, so it's a pretty good target. So let's download professional videos for you. So it does change that, from the other one, which is a, a supposed image. And it actually, okay, now I understand how this works, because I didn't quite see how convincing this would be. But what we get is a zip file with a video for you. Now, it's still unfortunately got a PNG, but note how Windows says this is an application. So what's the trick here? Well, let's extract this, and it's got a video thumbnail. So if we go to properties, wait a second, how, how, so there's a massive blob of spaces here before we get to the file extension. That's how that works. Now, it's not digitally signed, and it's got a description. As previously it wasn't, it's fully undetected malware. Although if you look at the comments, and uh, triage has detected, yikes, that's a rat. That's not even just, that's not just a case of a virus. This is a rat. See this massive spaces? So you have file extensions, you're not detecting it. You got none of the antiviruses got it eight hours ago. Maybe a few of them will be onto it now. So let's try and see how this might work. So first of all, I'm going to run this through Detect It Easy. And then I'm going to do the unpack. Now the unpack process is going to be the same as normal. After we unpack it, we can get into the fun part. But high entropy uh, section data is compressed. And the antiviruses continue to say that this is a completely harmless file. Now, before we get into the reverse engineering, are you interested in learning more about how AI can benefit you? I've partnered with Growth School. Growth School are offering a three-hour hands-on AI training where they teach you how to use over 25 AI tools. Register now. The link is in the description. Trust me, this training is a game changer for people who want to grow in their career. Here's the best poem. This would normally be paid training, but it's exclusively free for the first 1,000 of my viewers who join using the link below. Yes, it's for free. Only for my viewers. People who register will also receive $500 worth of bonus resources. It will cover everything from ways you can use AI to help you hunt for jobs and negotiate salaries, to using AI to automate Excel and even create content. This AI training isn't just for the most tech-savvy folks. Whether you're in finance, sales, marketing, HR, a student, or an entrepreneur, this AI training is definitely for you. Growth School has helped over a million people upscale across the globe, and this is your chance to join that top 1% in an AI-first world. So click the link in the description, snag your free spot, and this is the only chance to get it for free. Don't forget to join Growth School's WhatsApp community to not miss any updates and meet other AI enthusiasts just like you. Now back to the video. So now we're on the main system, and we're in Binary Ninja. So, first job is to figure out where is the unpack portion, and then we can then we can go back to dynamic analysis. 
Now, you often see me using ChatGPT for bits and videos, but I thought as we're getting into the AI, I'll explain a bit more of that. Now, first thing we do usually is we go to the data and we see, I think it was said that the high entropy was in the all data, but we can check, is it in the read-only data or the data section? And this is a packer that is written in Rust. You can tell that just from the way this is set up. Well, we may not, may not actually need uh, a lot of genius here. Uh, it looks like we've actually got a pretty obvious... I'm having a hard time believing this is actually enough to get around antivirus. Is that a PyCylon? That's no, probably a different, different Python payload. But the first job is getting this massive blob out of here. Now what we get here is actually a DLL, and the export well no X is almost certainly our problem file. And probably going all the way through, uh, we have a compressed zip file. So let's try and get that out. Now there's a possibility there could be a password on this, at which point I am probably going to do this dynamically. And here we see a call into that zip library where we unpack this. And thanks to this, we know exactly how many bytes we need. Still quite an unimpressive packer so far. Now, one setting I change in binary ninja is I make this the file offset. So we just go here, and then we are right at the right spot. So first of all, I'm going to delete the first few bytes. Looks like I missed a few, so we can clean that up there. Then we jump, and we have the size uh, thanks to this count down here. We want to remove everything after that. And now all of the malware is extracted. So this PW is where, to my understanding, uh, this is actually the Xworm payload. Got all of this uh, Python stuff here. And then the final step is actually just plain text. This is the actual malicious Python script. Now here is where we can start to work AI in. So if we paste this in, ChatGPT should be able to figure out what this is up to without too much work. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to do with AI. What is this doing? Now what we can do is get a high level understanding of what it's doing, and we can also potentially get some automated options to decode it. Now given it's using Marshall, it's going to be very difficult to find out what it's doing uh, dynamically. Now we can ask ChatGPT for code. Yes, could you provide... Now this all gets correctly recognized as a single string, one of the troubles with reverse engineering Rust is that it doesn't always get detected right. So now let's go back and see what ChatGPT has cooked up for us. So we'll copy this, and I'm just going to put this, I've got some other stuff in this folder, that's fine. So we'll just put it in here, and I'm going to copy the payload, which I don't think actually needs the Zlib. Oh no, no, I see it. Yeah, it does. Okay. So we just want the payload string, so we go back and get that. I'm just going to open a new one so I can just quickly clean up this payload string. There we go. So we do the base64. Then we do the Zlib, then we do the Marshall, and then we've extracted it. Now this part I'm going to do on the VM purely because Marshalling anything in Python is fundamentally risky. There's always the possibility of an escape. Now of course it wouldn't it wouldn't work quite right because of course this is a Linux computer and this is not a, a Linux uh, project. So we're going to copy this into our sample server and then we'll be able to work with this on the VM. Now we'll just open a terminal and run that. And then we need the embedded Python. I just copy that over. Because Marshall is not version compatible on Python. So if we run this with the embedded Python interpreter that we're supposed to use, it should deobfuscate. We have, okay, so this is Python bytecode. So the most we can, reason, can try disassembling it, then we can potentially use our AI tools to get more information about it. Now we can just use ChatGPT to convert that into readable Python code. And now we're into the real encrypted uh, part of this. Copy the constants from the actual disassembly. So I think the main secret to this getting zero detections is the fact that it's all it, it's not encrypted until we get several layers down so that any unpacker is going to have a much harder time getting it or going to have a harder time detecting it. And then we had to fix a few mistakes. And now we've got the new set of bytecode, which we can marshal, and then we can dump it out like we did the previous one. Now I'm going to try the PyC again just to see if it works this time, but I don't have high hopes. If not, we can just go with the disassembly like we did the other time and just use AI to get a good result. Now it's not valid. All right. I can already kind of tell where this is going just from looking at the 
at the hex, but let's disassemble this. And now it works. Just have to marshal it first. So we get go up. So we load this, load the OS, uh, load WinReg, shutil, and we install this explorer.link and we create a startup every time explorer.exe runs. I don't even need ChatGPT. I can, I can just... Oh, I guess I didn't extract the top level of that. Just in this uh, archive up here, I extracted the AI stuff, but I didn't extract... Okay, well, that's okay. So this is the file we we're interested in. We also have this pat.exe, which could very well be our actual malware. So I'll open this one up in Binary Ninja. And that's a cute app. And we got this link file. So let's see what's going on in this. So it does call the pat.exe. So I guess we might as well open the pat.exe. Now, given this is signed and has no indication of malware, then the magic probably lies in a DLL. Now, we finally found something off. This concrete140e.dll is not a DLL. So let's look at the other one. And you look to be real. Now here I found on a threat intelligence website, after googling our mystery DLL, that's not looking so good. So there's a malicious DLL, and then a second malicious DLL. So the actual X-worm does live in this concrete. So then we just got to figure out which DLL is trojanized. Now, we may have found the pattern. The QT5 GUI is the only one that doesn't have a valid digital signature. So I have a feeling if we run this in the debugger, and we set a breakpoint in DLL main on this QT5 GUI, uh, we're going to find our solution. What's interesting is from looking at the code, it does actually contain the QT, but that's not necessarily shocking because it's an open source project. Now we are going to hook create file w because if we're right we're going to see a hit oh stack buffer overrun well, it appears someone doesn't like running in a debugger in terms of unsigned we also have lib clang and lib curl as possible suspects the main reason that this dll is so suspect is the fact that in the entire set and we'll try it on virus tool as well this is the only cute one that isn't signed the main benefit of putting this on virus total is if it's real uh, it's not going to be, I'm not going to be the first person to upload a real DLL from a popular library. Now let's uh, just run the program without debugging just to see what it would normally do. Well, it appears to have instantly closed. Now whether that's a fake, or that's just because of course a rat doesn't want to make its presence super obvious. Let's try moving this to the folder it's intended to come in. Looks like we did get a run out of that. That add in process 32 shouldn't be there. Okay, and the setup is just the Visual Studio installer. So when we ran it with that, let's just see if running it with the debugger also triggers that. Then we're just not hooking the right thing. It's much easier to fix than this mess. So no luck there. But then if we run it the normal way, it immediately spawns add in process 32.exe. So then we simply have a debug detection problem. So I dumped it using Task Manager, and we're just going to take a look and see if we can find anything interesting. Now, this is not how you get a clean dump. It's how you get a dump that might be tolerable. And there we go. Definitely not the elegant way of uh, unpacking it, but uh, the way I found it was I just, uh, I'll go back to I'm Hex so I can show you, is once I had the memory dump, we could just uh, step around here and of course, this is now the trimmed dump, but we could see some things like from base 64 that didn't look like they belonged in the normal program. So now the final thing to do is just to get the code of our fully unpacked payload. We can simply use dnspy to unpack it. Now, I think the reason why I was having so many issues with the anti-debug is... We have a 64-bit loader for a 32-bit PE. Why is that interesting? Because there is a technique that can be used with Windows on Windows, which is the way that Windows runs a 32-bit program on a 64-bit Windows. There's a method with that you can use to create an essentially undefeatable anti-debug. There is a way around it 
but it's convoluted. So that's my best guess. Usually, if you run into a really... I, I always think the best thing... It's always good to know a couple of methods. So if you run into a really tricky anti-debug, always just dump the memory. It means we probably won't have a perfectly clean dump of this. Seems like this isn't getting detected as X... As a dot .NET in here. Yeah, so the reason is in fact just because the import table has been messed with. As this is an open source rat, I'm just gonna, I'll just pull it up on GitHub so you can see. Because I don't see a lot of point in going through the process fixing that. Because we can just show it off as we've gotten to the end of this. So here we can see some of the code. Now there's a weird thing. Uh, where Xworm, Async Rat, uh, there's a couple of these, and there's a weird lineage of them. They're all .NET rats. There's also a, a new. There's a new one where they just took the the Qzar uh, backend and they replace the actual rat. But because it is .NET, there is a uh, plenty of plenty of leaks. A lot of these leaks have actually been pulled, but so what does it do? Well, simple, it's a rat, it controls absolutely everything that your computer can do. Uh, they can just your computer is their computer once you run it, is the easiest way to explain what a rat does. It's not like PySylon, that Python rat I showed in a video, it's it's full blown, everything. It's basic. It's remote desktop. It, they call it HVNC because they have remote access and it's hidden from you. So that's going to be all for this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. That's all for now. Bye.